Louis II was the son of Lothair I, born about 825. His father had something of a controversial career. Opposing his own father, Louis the Pious, twice, arguing with his brothers, eventually going to war with them, before eventual reconciliation, and all that just in time to deal with the increasing threat of the Vikings to the Carolingian Empire. Lothair died in 855. He had he had crowned his son. Louis, King of Italy in 844, and also had him crowned co-emperor in 850. Louis's crowning as King of Italy came about when his father sent him to Rome to stamp imperial authority on the papacy. But Lothair must have also had one eye on the future, given the turbulences Rome was facing at the time. Louis, Louis by this point, was now a young man of about 19. So extra power was only a natural move. Negotiations with Pope Sergius II were concluded successfully, and Louis had established imperial control in Rome, and was now a king in his own right. While Louis's father and uncles, Charles the Bald and Louis the German, struggled against repeated Viking attacks on the empire, Louis faced his own external threat. This time it came from Muslim invaders. The threat of Muslim attacks was very real in early mid medieval Europe, with Spain in effect com completely conquered by the Moors. Louis's kingdom in Italy came under attack in 846, when the raider, with the raiders even making it as far as Rome. The danger was so real that Loth Lothair the emperor himself had to intervene, and sent some of his own forces into Italy, where they handed the Muslims a heavy defeat in battle. Louis then engaged the Muslims in battle himself, but was defeated and narrowly avoided capture. This was an ignominious start for a young ruler. Were it not for his father's earlier help, the situation could have been a lot worse for Louis. A much needed boost to his prestige came in 850, when Lothair sent Louis to be crowned co-emperor. He needed it, as in 852 he sustained another blow. Attempting to regain the Muslim-held Benevento, Louis was advised to pull back from the siege. While Louis procrastinated on his next move, the Muslim defenders used their unexpected time to reinforce the city's defences. Louis had been making progress and was on the verge of making a significant gain in capturing Benevento when he heeded the poor advice and the time and effort he and his men had spent putting into the siege all went to waste. Louis, now, ne now nearly eight years into his reign, and his rule so far could only be described as disappointing. In 855, Lothair died, and Louis was now Holy Roman Emperor in his own right. He kicked things off in much the same way as his father had done by arguing with Louis the German and Charles the Bald. Like Lothair had done previously, Louis sought to siphon off some of the territory held by his uncles. Soon after, Louis then nearly came to blows with his brothers, in much the same way before diplomacy, ev diplomacy eventually won out. Throughout Europe in the late 850s, general chaos reigned. Not only was there the threat of attacks from Viking and Muslim invaders, but internal fighting in the kingdom also broke out, most notably by Charles the Bald and Louis the German. The two had been on the same side in their dispute with Lothair, but now faced off against each other. Intermittent peace talks between the two took place, but their constant squabbling thwarted any hopes of a successful, sustained and more forceful response to Viking attacks. This was a tricky time to be a ruler, and Louis found that fact out once again in 861, when his own citizens turned against him and launched a rebellion. It may well be that they were frustrated by Louis's poor response to the Muslim invasions, and perhaps the king himself was also pent up with anger, as he retaliated against the rebels by cutting them down with fire and sword. In 863, Louis sought to annex Provence, 
much to the alarm of one of his brothers. Talks were held and Louis does seem to have come out on top of them in the negotiations as he gained Provence from the talks. With his work done here, he went back to Italy. The following year, Louis had a disagreement with the papacy, leading to highly unsavoury scenes again in Rome where Louis' forces once again demonstrated a lack of restraint against ordinary people. It is much to Louis' shame that this seems to have been a bit of a theme in his rule and the sign of a poor king who cannot show leniency to his people. By this point, his reputation among contemporary chroniclers seems to be declining, and with one referring to him as so-called emperor. After a period of sustained violence, including the raping of nuns, the rape and murder of ordinary people, and the burning of churches, Louis and his men left Rome. Towards the end of 864, Louis was seriously wounded in a hunting accident, possibly by, attacked by a stag. And in, He recovered and in 866 he launched an, a, another assault on the Muslims at Benevento, this time taking his wife with him. Louis' assault on Benevento proved altogether more successful. At one point his efforts did look like ground into a halt. But after negotiations with the Byzantine Emperor Basil I, Basil sent Louis a force of 200 ships to help with the, with the siege. To prove the turning point and Benevento was captured. And soon after the entire region of Barry fell to Louis. In 871, Louis found himself on the receiving end of a plot after he had sent the arrival of his wife into exile. That rival plotted a night attack on Louis, but Louis managed to escape, and the ben Beneventine rebels who had assisted in the plot were brought to terms. However, the man behind the plot continued to be a thorn in the side of Louis as he avoided capture himself. In 875, Louis died, aged about 50. His reign had not been an easy one. Ninth century Europe was a volatile place for any ruler, capable or otherwise. Louis had shown that he was capable at times of strong military leadership and diplomatic skills in his recapture of Barry and his dealings with Basil I, the Byzantine Emperor. But he had also shown a vicious, petulant and nasty streak, and that was not a good trait in any ruler. 